There we are. Okay. I don't know where we ended yesterday. Watch Okay, guys. So, uh, we it tastes like the fuse. I didn't want to eat it because it smelled weird and then they... Maybe you should have put on something. Here. Here's one for Carson and one for Billy. What's the other one? She ate the fuse and then ate it. You gotta, you gotta applaud that. Uh, okay, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just have something to wash it down. <laughs> I'll eat it. I'll eat it. Oh, 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 oh. Because, because he's one of Alan's mouth. Because he's a physics teacher and they eat fuses. We do. <laughs> they're honestly don't taste that bad. Once you get deep into it, they're deep. Yeah. That's what she said. What's you get? That was good. That was solid. <laughs> that was solid. <laughs> that was solid. <laughs> that's what she said. Once you get deep into it. So yesterday, guys, yesterday we looked at the uh, the simplest forms of things that are static. And again, when things are static, you have three conditions for equilibrium you must satisfy. The first one is that all the forces in the horizontal direction have to cancel out. The second one, all the forces in the vertical direction have to cancel out. And the third one, just give up. Just come back, come back this afternoon or something. They work off the table. The third one that is that all torques must cancel out. Now in the first situation we talked about, we talked about the hanging sign. And in the hanging sign, we didn't have any torques, but we did have vertical and horizontal forces. In the second situation, we talked about the, the plank. In the plank, we did have torques, then we had vertical forces, but no horizontal forces. And now we have all three. Okay? In this situation, we have a bar that is suspended by a cable. We're going to pretend this cable doesn't exist. This one does not exist. We're still going to use 55 degrees because it's handy. And we have the forces that are present. We have the weight of the mass is hung, Fg big M. We have the weight of the bar, Fg little m, and the other forces we have present are the tension. Now we don't deal with oblique vectors, so we we break the tension vector into a vertical vector and a horizontal vector. The vertical vector pushing up, the horizontal vector pushing towards the wall. <coughs> because really, if you think about it, the tension is pushing this way. So we can think of the tension as being pull, pulling up and pushing into the wall. Make sense so far? The other two forces we have are the normal force resisting the bar being pushed into the wall. So just like you're pushing into the floor, the floor is resisting that force. So there's a normal force pushing on the bar. And then there's a friction force pushing up, basically holding the bar up. <coughs> because if you just push something against the bar and there's no friction, it's going to slip. Okay, the friction keeps it from slipping. So those are all the forces that we know of that exist. Okay? We have horizontal forces, we have vertical forces, and we have torques. So the first thing we need to do now is write down our conditions for equilibrium. First one, let's look at the horizontal forces. And again, sigma fx equals zero. What are all the left forces? Or forces, it's a force. Fn. Fn? Uh, okay, that's pointing to the right, but um, uh, I thought you meant like on the left side. Oh, I see. I know. Okay, so so we have force. Uh, the TX is pointing to the left, and there's only one thing pointing to the right. What's pointing to the right? Fn. Fn. Okay. Fn, and that's where the bar encounters uh, the wall. Okay, so that's pretty easy. So that's kind of neat. Where there's only two forces in the x direction, the tension in the x direction, and the Fn. That's it. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me so far. All right, next, let's look at the second condition for equilibrium, and that is the forces in the y direction have to cancel out. So look at the up vectors and the down, and that's a D, and the down vectors. What's one of the, what are the up vectors? What's one of the up vectors? T-Y. T-Y, so the tension of the cable. What else? Uh, friction. 
friction force. <laughs> friction force. Oh, this is the friction force at the wall. Okay. And sometimes you encounter it where they'll, they'll they say something to the effect of friction force can be ignored or friction is negligible um, or it's like a, a bolt that's been bolted in, but usually we do have to include it. Okay. Are there any more vertical upward forces? <coughs> oh, no. no. Do you see any downward forces that we should take into account? FG little m and FG big m. FG little m and FG big m. Good. So we have two downward forces, the weight of the bar itself and the weight that's hanging from the bar, and those are going to be canceled out by the tension in the cable in the y direction <coughs> and the force upward from friction. Okay, so far so good? Yes. All right. So now we need some uh, tent torque. So the third condition for equilibrium is that all the torques are going to cancel out. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. So the ups are going to cancel out the downs, and the lefts are going to cancel out the rights. Okay. Now we need to pick a pivot point and set all the clockwise to all the counterclockwise. And this is where things get a little weird. Um, so again, what did I say about the pivot point? You can pivot anywhere. You can pick, exactly, you can put anywhere there's forces, and uh, you can put it at the wall, so you can ignore the torque of these. You can ignore these torques, or you can put it at the bar, so you can ignore this torque. Right. Entirely up to you. So where do you want to put the torque, or the, the pivot point? Put it at the wall. Put it at the wall. Okay, we'll put it at the wall. There's the torque. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. This is, if this is going to rotate, it's going to rotate that way or that way. So we have these torques, and they're going to produce a clockwise torque. So let's go ahead and write our clockwise torque. What's one clockwise torque? F, G, little m. And how far is that from uh, the pivot point? It's at half L. Okay, and another clockwise torque, Fg big M, and that is at full on L, right? L. Okay, those are clockwise torques, counterclockwise torque. What counterclockwise torques do we have? Which T? This is important. Tx. Okay. Look at the uh, look at where we drew the vector. Notice Ty is pulling this way. It's kind of like if you pulled the hammer this way, it's not going to rotate. If you push the hammer this way, it's going to rotate. So that's what you do. Is you have a bar here, and you can think of the bar is going to rotate this way. Well, if the bar is up here, and you apply a Ty, you can't actually apply any torque to it. Does that make sense? Because the rotation is going to be like this. So the rotation has to actually uh, encounter the bar. Yeah? No, because the pivot point, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, we cancel out this torque, and then it would pivot this way. And if it would pivot this way, then we would have to use TY, because TY would be pulling in that, that direction. Does that make sense? Um, I know it's really, you have to use your imagination, but that is kind of weird. But anyway. Um, I like to think of it as torques will always be perpendicular or some component of perpendicular. And this is your Tx. Your Ty would be that. And you can't, put a tor can't produce a torque with a Ty in this case. Okay, Kind of weird, I understand. But you can handle it. So uh, we have only one counterclockwise torque. And it is Tx. And the distance is a little odd because you need to know where it come, where it matches up here. So you're going to need an angle. So we have to redraw it. We have an L. Actually, let's redraw it over here somewhere. We can actually have a little more space. So we have an L, and then we have an angle. How can we find this distance? Yeah. Tangent theta. So the tangent theta is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, dl. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the length is going to be l tangent theta. 
Sometimes they're really generous and they'll actually tell you how, how where it uh, where it finds the top. Okay. Because if the bar is going to rotate, I need something here. There we go. Okay, so the bar's right here. The bar can rotate in these directions. Okay. This weight is going to pull the bar down. This weight is going to pull the bar down. And uh, thank you. And if the bar is up here, then the TX is going to pull the bar that way. Okay. So it rotates over the, uh, the pivot point until it reaches the vector. Does that make sense? So. So. Right, yeah. So the TY is pulling up. So if, the, if you could imagine the bar there pulling up TY, does no, no torque at all, TX is all the torque, and the distance it does it is from here to here. That's the lever arm. Okay, so far so good? Okay. This is actually the most difficult thing for me to understand is where you put the vectors on the bar until, um, until I realized, oh, it can rotate. So it can basically rotate over this radius. And if the bar is up here, then it's TX that's actually doing the pulling. Cool? Okay. You don't get why this one would be, so remember this is clockwise right here. So this vector is clockwise, this vector is clockwise. You have, a, you have this lever arm and this lever arm. If the vectors, up, if the bar is up here, TX is pulling that way. It's actually pulling the bar this direction, which is counterclockwise. Oh wait, is that all TX times L tangent theta? Yes. The L tangent theta is the D. Oh, I'm sorry. No, um, the L tangent theta. This is the D. This is the length of the lever arm. Okay, I was like, how did we? Because we needed we needed to find what this distance was from there to there. So basically, from the pivot point to where the the torque acts, and that D is this D here. If we have L and we have an angle, then we can come up with the D using tangent. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. In case you're wondering, um, for your assessment for this unit, it's not going to be really, really exotic. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're like, I can't do this on a test. I'm not going to expect you to. I am going to expect you to understand the very basic stuff. You're probably going to have one of these, though, and definitely one of these. Okay. So don't freak out. Don't, you can still freak out. You know what? You can freak out all you want. You can freak out all you want. That's fine. I'm not going to tell you how to, how to live. All right, so these are our conditions. We have our forces in the X, we have our forces in our Y, and then we have our torques. Okay. Now, depending on what values are given to us, we can find any of these. So what's usually given to you is L and one of the M's, or, <clears throat> or they'll give you both of the M's and L and ask you for what is the force normal, what is the force friction, or something like that. So let's go ahead and go that way. Um, what is the mass of the bar? Little m. Oh, ten. 10 kilograms. Okay, the mass of the bar is 10 kilograms. And then big M, we hung something from it. What is the mass of big M? 100? All right. You know, let's use something that's not a multiple of 10, because it's going to get really confusing. 35. 35? OK, 35. Yeah, if we, use, if we use something, you're like, is that 100 a weight or a mass? So just, let's just go with that. OK, so now we have a mass and uh, a mass of both things. So we can come up with a weight of both things. I'm going to change colors. So which of these vectors can we right away come up with? Oh, let's also figure out how long the bar is, too. Give me a length for the bar. That's gonna also going to make things easy. Uh, six. L is six meters. OK. L is six meters. OK. So there's a bunch of vectors in here. Do we have TX yet? No. No, we do not. Do we have FN yet? No. No. Do we have TY? No. No. Do we have force of friction? No. No. Do we have FGM? Yes. Yes, we do. So FGM is just going to be the weight of that, so we said it was 100, so 100 times 
Uh, oh, just 100. 100 newtons. And do we have this one? What is it? 350 newtons. Okay. So banging right along. Next, torques. And torques is where we start unlocking things. Torques is actually where we start um, unlocking variables that we didn't otherwise have. So FGM times 1 half L, the FGM you said was 100 newtons. So 100 newtons times 1 half L, 3 meters. So this is 300 newton meters of torque. Again, I'm sorry. I, it's a bad habit. OK. It's just the seeing thing. Is, I can't. I'm too short. I'm sitting down. OK. And then FGM is 350. And so it's 350 newtons multiplied by the length of 6 meters. I don't know what that is. 2,100? All right. So that's 2,100 newton meters. And that's going to equal Tx. I don't know what 6 tangent 55 is. 8.57. Really? Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. It's longer on the height, that leg. OK. So, if 6 tangent theta is 8.57, then you now have number plus number equals Tx times number. Yay! Now we got Tx. So solve for Tx, if you would, please. So you got 300 plus 2100 equals Tx times 8.57. It was 57, right? I heard you correctly? Okay. Should we round it like? Round it to three sig figs would be best, or two. 200, you said? 280. 280? Okay. So Tx is 280 newtons. Yay! All right. So that means the uh, Tx pulling this way is 280. Exactly. So now we got two of our three unknown variables. So Fn is 280. Yay, OK. So uh, now we have Tx, we have Fn. And from Tx, we can find T. t exactly. So if Tx is the law that direction and Ty is that direction, and your angle is 55, Tx, Ty, 55 degrees. So what we the situation we have is the tangent of 55 degrees is going to be the opposite, which is the Tx over the adjacent, or sorry, opposite, which is Ty, thank you, and adjacent is Tx. Wait, the adjacent is Tx on length? In, I just drew it again, so we have two vectors here. Oh, you drew it again like that. Yeah. Okay. You have another, basically, remember, we can move vectors wherever we want, so I just move the Ty over and use their angle. Right, so Tx, so it's just Mm. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. So it's 399. So 400. Three, 400? So Ty is 400 newtons. And look at that. Now we have FF. FF. Okay, cool. So FF is 50 newtons. Oh, so we are satisfying the, the vertical component. So TY, which we just solved using tangent, plus the FF equals the FG plus FG, which is 50 newtons. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What was the question? No. Oh. So then another typical question that you might see is what is the minimum coefficient of friction that holds the bar in place? And I actually, we're going to do that next week. We're going to look at a situation just like that in real life. So anyone remember what the formula for friction is? Third row? Uh, it's mu 
Close. Force of friction is mu so, uh, times Fn. Yep, mu Fn. So the typical exercise that one might ask at the end of this is, what is the minimum coefficient of friction that would hold the bar in place? So I have a little rubber stopper that I'm going to stick to the wall. I'm going to ask you to tell me what the minimum coefficient of friction is to hold the bar in place. So let's pretend that we want to know what the minimum coefficient of friction would be that would hold that bar in place. Could you solve it? Yeah. You betcha. Can you solve it? Yes, I can. What do we decide F, Fn was? 280? <laughs> it, was, it came from the vertical component, the vertical component of uh, equilibrium, where we had Ty, we had Fg and Fg, and we just subtracted to find Ff. Um, you multiplied the 280, which was Tx, by tangent 55. Yeah. My guess is your calculator's in radians. Oh. Tan 55 times. Oh, I got it. Okay. So, what is the minimum coefficient of friction that would hold the bar in place? 0. 0.18. Sounds good to me. Okay. You ready for the last one? I'm not going to make you work it out, but I just want to show it to you so you know what's going on. Because Primarily because I want to move on to something else. Um, and I haven't seen this on the AP in a very long time. But I, want, I do want to show you the fourth type. The fourth type of static exercise that you're going to see is the ladder. <laughs> Look at all those vectors. Um, so before I talk about the ladder for the remaining, remaining five minutes of class, do you have any questions about the hanging bar? We can, we can skip the ladder, but I do want to. We're not going to. We're not going to process the ladder. I just want to show you what this looks like. You don't have to write. You don't have to write anything down, but you just. You'll be smarter for it. But you know, if you want to be mediocre, I understand. There it is. You know, if uh, you know, not everybody is going to be successful. The world does need garbage collectors. It'd be a very dirty place if we all became engineers. But I want to make sure you understand. You understand these conditions for equilibrium and how we satisfied them before we move on. All right. Okay. So the leaning ladder always has some sort of wall, and there's a lean. It lean. The ladder is leaning on it, and sometimes you even see it drawn like a ladder. And then you have. Carson standing on the ladder, <laughs> trying to hanging, trying to hang something up, and then dropping, and then dropping it. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Very good point. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to draw three start three sided pitch spinners, but um, okay. So this is how a leaning ladder works. Okay. Now imagine you're on a ladder. You've probably all been on a ladder at some point, and you want somebody secu to secure it. And if they uh, don't secure it, then what direction is this ladder going to move? Yeah, it's going to slide this way, right? So it's going to slide this way, which means that something is keeping the ladder from sliding. And what's keeping the ladder from sliding? Friction. Friction. And does friction act to the left or to the right? The ladder is going to slide this way. So friction is acting this way. Okay. And if there's ever a friction, ladies and gentlemen, or really, we have three minutes left. I understand you want to go home and play Pokemon. Um, there's, it's all about the Clash Royale. Okay. Fortnite. Fortnite. Okay. 
Have you played Fortnite? I have not, but I'll, I'll look it up. Is it, is it, it's a steamy game? No, it's not a steamy game. Okay. So, guys, back to this. I, okay. If there is a friction force, there must also be a what? A normal force. Okay. So there's a normal force. And remember, normal force and friction are always perpendicular. Okay? So far, so good? Next thing you need to know. Carson has a weight. Carson's weight acts exactly where Carson is. So this is FG Carson with a K. Carson. Okay? So that's FG Carson. And then the ladder itself also has a weight. Where does the ladder act? Where does the weight of the ladder act? The wall on the ground. Only the center. At the center. So which unfortunately I put the FG there, but let's pretend that's the center. So the FG of the ladder acts exactly at its center. And because triangles cannot be taken apart, if this is L, then the FG of the 